My name is Kathy Hambrick and I am the founder of the River Road African American Museum. And I want to say welcome to the Freedom Museum. Yes, we are a museum located in plantation country, South Louisiana, but the stories we tell at this museum are about the triumphs and tribulations and the success of Africans and African Americans in this region. Uh, my name is Daryl Hambrick. I'd like to welcome you to the River Road African American Museum located here in historic downtown Donisonville. Our mission is to interpret and to collect and to restore uh, buildings and history uh, related to African Americans from slavery until present. Our focus is on Louisiana and local history um, that ties into the big picture of America's history. Uh, this room is um, our beginning, I guess, of timeline of slavery here in Louisiana. We talk about plantations, we talk about life on the plantations, um, we talk about uh, people who were not enslaved as well as those who were enslaved. So uh, that we talk about those who were free, who lived amongst those who were enslaved. Um, we talk about the codes, the codes noir, the black codes. Um, which in French Louisiana were very popular. Um, New Orleans and South Louisiana was totally different from, I guess, the northern part of our state. The map that you see right here is um, from 1858, and it is from uh, the Mississippi River, from Natchez, Mississippi, into Louisiana, on down into East Baton Rouge. Here it ends, and it picks up here, East Baton Rouge, on down into Ascension Parish, where we're located here on into New Orleans. And each of these green and yellow uh, symbols here represent sugarcane plantations. The pink and blue represent cotton. And you can see that there were thousands. I'd like to welcome you to our kitchen. This is the most sacred part of the house. Um, if you came into this kitchen and uh, there was a cook or, or whoever the household cook was here, she would say, don't touch my pots, don't touch my stove, because this is a sacred place. Would you believe that okra comes from Africa? Inside of here are the seeds inside of this pod that were planted. They were placed inside the braids of the Africans um, and they were brought to America. These seeds were bought here. So that okra, which means gumbo in the African language, is now part of the cuisine that we enjoy here in South Louisiana. Africans have uh, influenced uh, cuisine all over the world, especially here in South Louisiana. Um, many of the food ways and the things that we enjoy here today um, are part of the African uh, tradition. Uh, we, we don't know sometimes uh, yams, rice. Uh, would you believe rice comes from Africa? Many people don't know that. Uh, okra and various other products, watermelon. Um, and a lot of the way the food is prepared. The preparation uh, is also significant to the cuisine that we hear in South Louisiana. Uh, we also highlight black inventors here. Uh, this one is a tribute to George Washington Carver and it talks about all of the inventions here. This egg beater was also uh, one of those inventions. The broom, um, uh, also the rug beater. Um, there were all sorts of um, uh, inventions that came out of necessity. And so they say necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, in many of these instances, these um, people who were enslaved on these plantations did a lot of work, and sometimes they wanted to make the job easier. So their inventions became uh, many of these creations. And these are over a hundred different uh, inventions created um, by blacks throughout time. From the stoplight, lawnmower, I mean, you just, it's unbelievable. Uh, welcome to our music room. Um, this is called the Rural Roots of Jazz exhibit. We say that music is the ultimate expression of freedom. And as you look at these um, exhibits on the wall, you see many musicians. Many of these musicians were born in these rural parishes, left these rural parishes, moved to New Orleans, and became famous. One of them is King Oliver, who gives Louis Armstrong his start. King Oliver was born two miles from this museum in a town called Abed. Louis Armstrong is 15 years old when he joins King Oliver's band. 
Louis Armstrong is the father of jazz, so we say that the grandfather of jazz was born right here in Donaldsonville, the rural roots of jazz. As you look around this room, you notice uh, this character here. Why would the Pink Panther be in an African-American museum? Well, it's right here. Uh, Plas Johnson, born in Donaldsonville, is the original musician who plays the actual soundtrack for the Pink Panther cartoon. Can you imagine that born right here in Donaldsonville, Louisiana? The instrument that you're looking at here was played by a lady by the name of Sylvia Watkins, who lived in this home that we're in, where our museum is housed. She is a great granddaughter of Dr. Lori, who was one of the first black physicians here in this town. Uh, she was the musician at the St. Peter United Methodist Church, which was founded by the first African-American mayor elected in the United States by the name of Pierre Landry. I'd like to introduce you to Pierre Landry, the first African-American mayor elected in the United States. He was mayor of Donisonville, 1868. Born on the Prevost Plantation here in Donisonville, his mother enslaved his father, the overseer. So, born free, sold into slavery at the age of 16 for $1,665, sold to the homeless plantation. Three years after emancipation in 1865, 1868, he becomes the mayor of this town, Donisonville, Louisiana, for one year. Uh, we highlight uh, the successes and the hardships. Um, through the hardships of slavery, there were many uh, successes. Madam C.J. Walker, uh, first born um, out of slavery, becomes uh, an entrepreneur, um, a self-made millionaire, one of the first self-made millionaires in America. She created uh, a product that would grow hair. And during that period, if you could grow hair, then you almost were like magic. And she had a product that sold uh, not only here in the U.S., but in several countries outside the Philippines and Guam. Uh, she had a manufacturing company and was born in Delta, Louisiana. Um, uh, she ends up in a mansion in upstate New York. Um, so you can see that she was very successful uh, despite uh, her upbringing. Talk about Reconstruction, uh, the period uh, approximately uh, right after emancipation, uh, begins right, right around 1868, lasts for about 10 uh, years. Uh, and we elect here in Louisiana the first um, black lieutenant governor, O.J. Dunn, and this gentleman becomes an appointee um, after that who is PBS Pinchback and known as the first or the only African-American governor here in Louisiana.